Okay, good evening. I'm Bernard Green, Chair of the Brookline Select Board. This is, the, uh, this is a special Select Board meeting for Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020. Um, let's see, uh, Devin, does anyone, oh, I'm sorry, does anyone have any announcements or updates they'd like to uh, uh, make at this point? No? Okay. Uh, Devin, let's move on to public comment. Um, I understand that we have a few people interested in making a comment regarding various and sundry things. Um, do you have uh, a queue set up? Yes, so the first um, person who had signed up was uh, James Franco. So I'm going to promote, I don't know if this is Ellen or James, but had signed up last week. If you're not ready, I can go to the next person. Yeah, this, uh, I'm just mindful that um, I'm wondering, just in terms of the use of our time, uh, my understanding is maybe the, the petitioners of some of these one articles we're going to discuss might be making some changes or, or doing something different. I'm just wondering how that's going to impact the, the comment that members of the public might have or, or decide not to have. Um, Oh, that's a good point. Um, how do you how do you want to uh, do this? Uh, have the petitioners come in now, um, or uh, have uh, someone maybe have their, their outline what what uh, the new latest developments are? I mean, if, if Heather's aware, that'd be that'd be great. Yeah, they Heather, are. You... They're also all here, just so you know. Okay, Heather, what do you think? I mean, I think it's useful to take some comment. Um, I will just take this opportunity to, to say that the petitioners have backed off of uh, wanting us to vote on a warrant article that would change our zoning for this coming town meeting, just in case anyone is not aware of that. Um, and what will be before us tonight are two warrant articles, one that is a um, you know home rule petition, uh, the other one is a resolution, and then um, then we'll talk about next steps for the select board and maybe the planning department to form a working group and when deliverables would be anticipated uh, a deadline for that. So just so that everybody is kind of aware of the current state of things. I think that's helpful, thanks. Yeah, very helpful. Okay, let's start, uh, let's start with the comments. So Devin, do we have someone? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Hi, this is Jim Franco, not Ellen. Sorry to disappoint you. Uh, I, I, I guess I don't really have to make a comment. My comment was uh, about the inadvisability of, of the board uh, co-sponsoring the uh, the warrant or the fossil free, free uh, uh, warrant uh, zoning warrant article. Uh, if that's not going to be brought, then I'll just shut up. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll, we'll note your uh, position and uh, move on. The next person signed up is Kathleen Scanlon. Kathleen, you've been promoted to a panelist and you can unmute when you're ready. Hi, can you hear me? You can. Yes. Great. I'm Kathleen Scanlon. I'm an architect, town meeting member, precinct three, select board climate action committee and a former co-petitioner for Warren Article 21. And I just wanted to um, make, a, make some comments about these articles. Um, thanks to the select board and the building department and all the work of the planning staff last year, no town meeting passed by an almost unanimous vote Warren Article 21. And this was after an extremely long and thoughtful <laughs> public process to find out how fossil fuel free construction could work best for Brookline. And we ended up passing what we considered, I mean, really the low hanging fruit after showing that it made, um, I'm sorry, I didn't realize my video wasn't on. I'm here. <laughs> and so this was after, you know, after we passed this low hanging fruit and showing that it made sense economically and that the technology was already there and that we just had to nudge the market to stop installing 
what we already knew for heating and cooling and look at other options. Um, I just want to make you aware that since then, 12 towns and cities have banded together to explore their own pathways to warn Article 21-like legislation by participating in workshops and coaching organized by Rocky Mountain Institute. I'm volunteering as a coach um, with the city to the city of Melrose, which is actually a really great pairing since they were so helpful in informing Brookline about their pathway to community choice aggregation a few years ago, if you recall. Um, so like Brookline, Melrose has also had a large project come through its planning process and found itself ill-equipped to ensure a fossil fuel free project that the community really wants to see. I also want you to know that when the Attorney General's office did not uphold Warren Article 21, you know, the brief, if you read it, was very sympathetic to our goals and suggested we instead look at incentives. And, um, you know, through all these conversations, I think we realized that only so many incentives are available. So I hope a working group does go forward to examine what would work for Brookline. Um, but since Brookline has been the only town here to pass a fossil fuel prohibition, it is very important that we act now to submit and pass these other warrant articles. We need to be able to point to these past articles along with those passed by other towns and cities so the legislature can see that they need to act. You have 30 seconds. Thanks. Um, you know, and I and I, you know, have heard some rumblings about the zoning um, needing a more comprehensive review. And I just also wanted to point out that it took Somerville seven years to complete that process, and we need to be off of fossil fuel um, in ten years to avoid catastrophic effects of climate change. So we don't have seven years to incorporate what is now a demonstrated community value, and even now we're talking about even a lot less than the low-hanging fruit of Warren Article Twenty One. So thank you. Thank you. The next person signed up for public comment is Linda Pelkey. Linda, you can unmute and share your video. Hello. Uh, I'm Linda Olson Pelkey, town meeting member, precinct two. I'm a professional urban planner and member of the Select Board Climate Action Committee and the Zoning Dialogue Committee. I understand that the board recognizes that using zoning to incentivize fossil fuel free construction needs more careful analysis than can be achieved through the short virtual town meeting process this fall. I strongly agree. Our planning and building departments have pointed out many of the potential problems and issues that need to be addressed. As many of you saw, I shared some graphics showing the impacts of the initial incentive proposal revealing the rather drastic impacts in terms of increased floor area ratio and height throughout Brookline. In our densest district, this translated into height increases up to an additional 45 feet and FAR increases up to an additional 68% due to the additive nature of fossil fuel free bonuses on top of public benefit incentives. A similar issue of cumulative FAR bonuses exists in our single and two and three family districts. This initial exercise of illustrating the impacts of the proposal was useful as it revealed that we must analyze potential impacts carefully. After many conversations on this topic, it's fair to say that any group tasked with further work must first ask themselves whether or not granting density bonuses for fossil fuel free construction makes sense from a climate perspective, or whether or not the impacts to our built environment and landscape are worth it. Due to outcome, do, do the outcomes align with our other town goals, such as increased open space or affordable housing? What are the overall impacts on greenhouse gas emissions? If we factor in the energy sources in our electric supply, increased size of housing units or commercial spaces, and the potential loss of open space and trees, or the loss of the embodied carbon in the buildings that would be demolished and redeveloped. We need to also answer the question of how much of an incentive is needed, or is the building sector recognizing the cost and comfort benefits of going fossil fuel free already? How do we handle the changing nature of the technology, the state building code, and the evolving adaptation of these technologies in zoning? Are there other approaches that move us forward without triggering these potential negative impacts? These are just a few of the questions that I think need to be answered. 
have 30 we, seconds. Okay, we often hear about town meeting strong support for Warren Article 21. That support, however, may not directly translate to a zoning incentive article with much more complex repercussions and outcomes that may work at cross purposes to town goals. It's important to be thoughtful, transparent, and participatory as we pursue these goals. Referral to a working group or committee makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Thank you. The next person signed up for public comment is uh, Richard Banka. If you could unmute yourself. You can go Hi. ahead and get started. Good, thank you. Um, Dick Benka uh, and by way of background, I've been chair over time of three or four different committees that uh, were appointed to draft or review changes to the zoning bylaw. And you've all, I think, received a memo that I put together, so I won't go into detail on that, but I do wanna emphasize three points. First, I start with the premise that climate change is real and must be addressed, and that Warren article in the November 2019 town meeting was reasonable. That leads to my second premise. Providing incentives by changing zoning is different. With proposed zoning bonuses, you threaten the butters and existing neighborhoods in a way that Article 21 did not. You threaten with more massive buildings, taller buildings, smaller yards, and smaller setbacks. And the initial plan, and I think the current plan, was to do this as of right in residential zones without even giving notice to abutters or the opportunity to be heard. I think if anything, I could argue that residential neighborhoods are the ones where notice and hearings are the most important. That takes me to my third and final point from my experience. Zoning is a complex process. It's fraught with potential unintended consequences and the need to draft carefully to anticipate and to close loopholes. The committees that I chaired were looking at particular provisions that were being abused. And despite diligent work, the drafting, feedback, revision, and re-revision still took the better part of a year. The Newberry College site zoning overlay was recently done in about five months after the committee was appointed and in place, but that was a single project with one owner. Here, you're talking about town-wide zoning changes affecting residential single family districts, two family districts, multifamily, commercial, and buffer zones adjoining residential districts. And you're not just talking about one issue, you're talking about floor area ratios, height, setbacks, required yards, and now other changes as well. I think if you're most concerned about the energy use in larger buildings, and encouraging development in commercial zones and having those buildings, those large energy users fossil free, maybe that should be the initial focus with an eye to what is really necessary to encourage fossil fuel development. You have 30 maybe, seconds. maybe the initial focus should be on parking minimums. But the bottom line is you simply cannot impose unrealistic expectations on town commissions or departments. Thank you. The next person Thank signed you. up is uh, Werner Lowy. You can unmute yourself whenever you're ready. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Werner Lowy. I'm town meeting member in precinct 13, and I'm co-chair of the Select Board's Climate Action Committee. Uh, it's very important for the Select Board to sponsor these uh, two articles and to support the collaborative approach to, to zoning, uh, to a zoning Santa Board article. Uh, I assume that, that you all have read the uh, Collins Center report, which was just issued last week uh, about the, the, the town's approach to climate change uh, and sustainability. I, I think it's fair to say that the central conclusion of that report is that neither the Select Board nor the Select Board's Climate Action Committee has shown the leadership on climate change that town residents and town staff expect. Um, Recent, both, both recently and during the whole past year, the proponents of these articles have been doing exactly what the town administration and now the Collins Center have asked, uh, that they've been working closely with the town on these proposals. Uh, the, it seems to me that the, the resolution and the home rule articles are, are simple, uh, but, and, and I believe that, that we, can, we can craft a zoning incentive that'll satisfy at least almost everyone. 
I don't think the unintended consequences of, uh, of zoning incentive are as great as some people claim. And, and in particular, um, if we're going to stop climate change and address affordable housing, which also has important racial justice issues, then we need to start thinking differently about density. We have to stop saying, right, we were now, now too often we say, right, we need more dense multifamily housing, but somewhere else, we just, we just don't want to change the, the zoning here in Brookline. Uh, that, that, it seems to me, uh, has to end. We have to think more realistic, realistically. Uh, we have to be part of the solution to these problems. Uh, concerning climate change very specifically, um, it seems to me that more than anything else recently, Ed Markey's victory yesterday shows us where this country is headed. And, and I think it's very important now more than ever for Brookline and the select board to lead. So I hope you will support these things. Thank you. Thank you. Next person signed up for comment is Lisa Cunningham. Hi, Devin. I'm going to, I'm just going to wait and make comments um, as a co-petitioner. Thank you. So that's the only folks who I have left. So I don't know, Bernard, if you'd like me to promote all of them or take them individually. All of what, the remaining or the co-petitioners? Yes, the public, um, all, the only people I have left are the folks who've spoken to you all before on these articles. Um, okay. Steve Hyken, Paul Sainer, Jesse Gray, and Cora Weisbord as well. Okay, so why don't we promote them all, but uh, uh, th their presentation should be um, maybe 10 minutes. And it's four people, and so this can go on for a while. Hello, what is it? Okay, I said something. Well, what does what does the rest of the board think? Okay, I, I assume that that works for me. Okay, good. It works for me too. I mean, we're all enough familiar with the proposals that right. I don't think people have to draw, you know, talk a long time about them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the we real, know the real climate question. crisis, please don't tell us that again. Well, okay, so maybe maybe I'll start. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to say. First of all, thank you for having this meeting and um, well, thank you for... Let, let's... Okay, Heather. Are you still there, Heather? I am. Okay, you wanted to jump in first? Well, I, I was uh, just going to propose that we take the low hanging fruit first, which is, uh, I think, the home rule petition and the resolution. Um, mm -hmm. Get that out of the way and then concentrate on uh, the uh, working group. Okay. You mean the resolution Good. to the uh, state government? True. Okay. So uh, in that case, uh, I would suggest that uh, Lisa and Cora speak, speak to that from our team. I just lost my window. We can, can hear you, guys, you. Can you guys hear me? Fine, then I'll just keep talking. I can't see you, but you can see me. Um, so we've got um, two pieces, two wired articles here. Um, the resolution actually calls for the um, Massachusetts State Legislature, um, the Department of Public Re um, Utilities, and the um, BBRS, the Building, the Board of Building Regulations and Standards, um, to commit to a swift, just building car decarbonization, to decarbonization, and it clearly articulates the goals and values of our, our town. So um, it's something that we are hoping that many other towns and cities are going to also take up with us um, and the idea of this is to influence the state legislature. Um, we've spoken with the, this um, about this with Tommy Victolo extensively and um, we really need to pressure the state legislature to act. So this is one way of doing that. Um, this tactic, um, I'm sorry, let me just uh, get my, the, um, we've included um, that we need the state to keep equity, affordability, labor impacts, um, and environmental justice, justice concerns um, top of mind in a just transition away from fossil fuels, um, and that the state allow municipalities to enact Brookline-like ordinances prohibiting fossil fuel combustion 
in new buildings and major renovations. Um, so this is very broadly written. Other towns might want to amend this resolution as they see fit, um, but I hope you had a chance maybe to glance at it. Um, but it's um, aspirational, but it's just saying that any community can pass their own warrant Article 21s. Um, and they don't have to commit to doing it, but they should have the ability to do it. So that's, um, that's the resolution. The home rule petition is, um, is, the, is a request to the state legislature to grant Brookline the local authority to implement Warrant Article 21. So if, um, if, that is, if that is granted, we would have the power to grant our own um, fossil fuel prohibition. Um, and we, that, this has been written in, in a very broad way to, as well so that other towns and cities can also follow us and um, try and, and get their own home rule petitions um, passed as well. Um, our hope is that we will get other communities to join us. We'd like to get other gateway communities to join us. Um, Kathleen mentioned Malden. Um, we're also talking with communities like Worcester and Salem. Um, so we wanna get a range of communities to take this legislation forward. Again, the idea isn't just to allow Brookline to do this. The idea is to allow um, communities throughout the state by pressuring the state legislature and um, making them understand the importance of supporting um, building electrification and decarbonization. You have 30 um, seconds. Excuse me? You have 30 seconds. Um, I think I am, let me just, uh, let me just look at my notes. I think I'm basically um, done. I mean, I think the home rule petition, we're going to try and get, a, as I said, we're going to try and get a bunch of towns and cities to follow us. But what's really important is that we are indicating to the state legislature that they need to move forward and to the DPU and to the BBRS that they actually need to take action at the state level. Okay, thank you. Um, on this, on this topic, the, the resolution any discussion from the select board? Ms. Heller? I support this, uh, the resolution to uh, um, ask the state to adopt as soon as they can, um, the essentially the tenets of Article 21, because it's so, it's so important uh, to do it at a statewide level and it has more teeth in it. Uh, I think it's the kind of thing that we really um, think the state should do. So um, I, I'm hopeful that the effort to get other towns and cities will add pressure um, to uh, the legislature because as other towns and cities adopt uh, this position, they, their legislators will also uh, be pressing forward at the state house. So I think we should have a vote on it and vote favorable action to add it to uh, the select board sponsored warrant articles and to recommend to town meeting that uh, we adopt it and send it on to the legislature. Okay, any, um, it, it, is the planning department or anyone uh, town staff available to give, give their comments or thoughts? Um, Mr. Chair, uh, this is Mel Kleckner, town administrator. I don't think the town uh, staff has any objections these two to do uh, articles. Okay. Uh, we're just talking about the resolution article, right? Oh, okay. Well, there are two resolution articles. Uh, no, there's, there's one, uh, as I understand, there's one article seeking a special act, uh, authorization of a special act, which essentially validates or makes all the changes that uh, were um, impeding uh, the attorney general from approving that. And then the second one is a resolution. So either, both of those are, have no, uh, opposition from staff. I, okay. We do want to talk about the uh, proposed work plan on the uh, zoning issue. Okay, so so let's vote on the uh, resolution, um, not the home rule resolution, but the uh, uh, the other resolution, unless there's any further discussion. Well, let's be clear that it's the resolution um, to, um, I can't go to it and I can't find it now uh, to urge the uh, state to adopt um, 
Is a resolution a calling for swift, just building decarbonization right. in the Commonwealth. Right. Correct. Okay. okay. Um, any further questions? Discussion? Okay, I, I think this uh, is more properly taken up by our sustainability uh, administrator, um, but you know, since we don't have one, <laughs> we're, we're, we're stuck with it. Um, so on favor, let's see, Ms. Heller. Aye. Uh, let's see, Ms. Hamilton. Aye. Mr. Fernandez. Aye. Uh, Mr. Van Scoyer. Aye. And Chair votes aye. Okay, next is the uh, home rule petition. Um, wh what is our, what are the chances of this passing and, and what are the costs in terms of political capital that we'll be expending in, in pushing this? Those, those are two issues that have come up in the past. Uh, Anyone? Who, who are you asking? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I guess I'm asking the uh, proponent or petitioners here. Does you Cor does Cor about want to take that one? Are you are you asking the co-petitioners? I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. That's um, what you said. So I think um, I'm not really sure what the costs are, but this is something that we spoke. Um, with Tommy Botolo about extensively. And he felt that this was a good mechanism to, um, to carry forward. Um, and again, with the goal of uh, pressing um, the state legislature to actually make some movement. Um, he, he, we are working hard to get other communities to follow us. We are in a program, as Kathleen mentioned, with um, about 12 to 14 other towns and cities. So we're hoping some of those towns and cities will follow us in this legislation. We already know some are planning to. And so the more, the more they're able to do this, um, again, it just creates more political pressure on the state, which is um, of vital importance right now. We really don't have much time as Kathleen also noted. And yes. more. Has Tommy said that this has a chance of a passage in the legislature? Actually what Tommy so said was that this will put political pressure on the state legislature to act. So it's really important that, um, that it's known that many towns and cities want to be able to pass this legislation, not just for one. Any further discussion? Okay, so let's vote on this. Again, this is uh, something that uh, we should have input from the, the uh, sustainability administrator. Um, but uh, you know, that's down the road. Um, let's see, all in favor, Ms. Heller. Aye. Ms. Ms. Hamilton. Aye. Ms. Fernandez. Aye. Ms. Venskoya. Aye. And chair votes, I guess I'll vote aye. I'm a little, I'm a little uncomfortable with it, but damage will be minimal. Okay, next, we're talking about what, Mr. Uh, Gray? Right, thank the zone, you. The zoning uh, bylaw proposal and uh, the further development of thinking around how to pursue this. I'll take a vote even if it's an uncomfortable one, if, if it goes in my favor. Um, so, yes, so I just wanna start because th there's been a lot of, a lot of um, comments on this one. And so I want to start by just saying that, you know, people forget that this is not actually any different in terms of political controversy. I know, I know that everyone says zoning is special and I understand what they mean, but th this is the controversy level here is the same. You know, it's also similar to the amount of public input we had. We had four working meetings before filing. Those meetings had attendance that were similar to the three select board meetings that we will have had after tonight. So the, I just, the idea that we're not getting the public commentary or that somehow we have less less consensus than we had with Warren Article 21 prior to filing, not the case. Nobody thought Warren Article 21 was going to pass uh, when we filed it. Um, everyone thought it was a crazy idea and um, it passed. And so that experience has not um, given me the thought that I should back down lightly. However, um, at the same time, uh, we do hear the need for thoughtfulness about zoning. We do hear that, you know, that some of these uh, goals people are not used to hearing 
uh, as, as a zoning goal. Um, so, so we are, um, we are actually in, excited in, to uh, have a little more time to do this a little bit better. Doesn't mean we're gonna make it any less comprehensive. Doesn't mean we're gonna back down on our desire to make this a meaningful uh, solution that is functioning across the whole town, even if there's district by district um, you know, specifics. Um, it doesn't mean that we agree with the mischaracterizations of what we put forward so far. I hope that you had a chance to read that explanation, which was um, in almost entirely the work of Steve Hyken in um, interpreting uh, the existing bylaw and, and uh, relating how this would this would alter that. Um, and but it does mean that we're willing to wait one more cycle. We're not going to wait more than one more cycle. We will bring something forward next cycle. Um, but we we ask for the town's help in um, informing uh, this uh, on a more healthy work schedule, you know, in the time between now and, and the next filing deadline. Uh, we, we welcome um, input from everybody, but especially analysis from the planning department that would inform a smarter way to do this. Now, a lot of people have said, you don't need zoning, you should do this some other way. Well, we, that's the part we've, that, we're very thoughtful about that. We've thought about this a lot. And um, as soon as someone comes to us with an alternative solution we're more enthusiastic about, we'll focus on that. But until then, we're gonna be focused on zoning and we, we're asking for your help with it. Okay, I see Paul Sainer has his uh, hand up. Sorry, Paul, I didn't, didn't notice. Thank you, Bernard. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, the hand thing is not showing up on my screen, so it's not, okay. <laughs> I'm not um, ignoring you, Paul. I, I appreciate the opportunity um, to talk about um, the fossil free um, zoning incentive approach that we've taken. And uh, obviously I'm uh, looking forward to um, uh, a working team to uh, move the discussion forward. Uh, a memo you received early yesterday evening used the word developer eight times, never referenced the word homeowner or commercial property owner. And I um, point that out because um, the approach that we're trying to take is town-wide and uh, very little um, permitting activity actually occurs outside of um, the residential zone. So it's really important to think about this, not from the perspective of a developer who no one wants to unduly rich, um, but a homeowner uh, like myself. Now it is absolutely true uh, that uh, there is no incremental cost for new construction to install FFF compared to gas. But what that point misses is one, uh, that um, the vast majority of building permit activity is around renovations. And uh, there's a considerable expense associated with um, having appropriate insulation in order to make FFF work in that type of situation. Um, I guess the other notion is that, um, you know, there's no need to incentivize this because it's already happening. Um, my wife and I have gone on uh, uh, way too many uh, open houses over the last two years trying to figure out our downsizing future. And we have yet to see uh, in any new construction building or gut rehab building uh, FFF uh, as uh, the outcome. It was referenced that Well Tower voluntarily complied with Article 21. I think many of us on the call uh, know that um, they had a huge incentive on the line, uh, the zoning that they needed to proceed uh, with their development. Um, so um, we are down to um, trying to fashion the most appropriate carrots and they surely do not need to be uh, zoning based if there's um, a, a better alternative. Um, uh, we have um, been told that this is some backdoor scheme to upzone the town and you heard um, testimony earlier still referencing these inflated FARs that were never our intention uh, that um, you know probably were not correctly drafted in the Warren article to net against public benefits. And that's one of the reasons why we need to step back uh, and get this uh, right. Uh, so um, I, um, in closing, want to um, say that um, 
you know, it's important that this proceed ahead. I was on the other side of the table this time a year ago from Jesse and Lisa. And frankly, I was very skeptical about the statements that, um, you know, this was critical for Brookline to provide leadership. It, it came across to me slightly as uh, an ego statement. I have been completely convinced that um, this, uh, uh, that Warren Article 21 has really jumpstart Lisa and other efforts around accelerating uh, municipal involvement within the Commonwealth uh, to put pressure mm -hmm. on the state to have the fix uh, there. Uh, I would also like to say in closing uh, that I hope uh, that there is a, a working team that consists of um, brilliant people around zoning like Linda and Dick. Um, I would ask that anyone that participates not try to go backwards on Article 21, as uh, the memo did last night, um, you know, raising the question of the quality of the grid. Uh, that was well considered when Article 21 was unanimously passed. Uh, this cannot happen uh, correctly without the active participation of uh, the planning department. Um, and so um, uh, Brookline, um, needs to continue to be progressive around climate action. And as uh, my recently deceased mother said, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, a couple of people have mentioned um, that uh, there's a, um, let's see, what <laughs> a change in the approach uh, that's being taken. So why don't we talk about that? that that's in the form of a proposed resolution of the select board um, that uh, addresses what uh, uh, the uh, resolution would want uh, town departments and commissions to do and has various timelines uh, on that. Uh, would anyone like to speak on that, Mr. Kleckner? Oh, I just want a clarification. Is, is, the, is the document that was being circulated today a proposed town meeting action or is it just a select board uh, vote? Didn't come across to me as a resolution, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. It actually was labeled a motion of the select board, not a resolution. So. Yes, I I, this this was only supposed to be for a select board, not town meeting. Yeah, yeah. I have some comments, but I'm happy to have others speak first. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd like someone to sort of motivate uh, this uh, motion that that you want the select board to vote on. Um, and then I'd like to hear from uh, town administrator, and I think other board members, in addition to me, have, have some thoughts, some comments. So, who's going to do that? You're asking. If you don't uh, volunteer. I'll, I'll 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 select someone. I'd be happy to speak to that. Okay. So, uh, we, you know, we're we're what we're looking for here is is some help. So one of the things we heard here is that uh, you know you can't just uh, make guesses and and stabs in the dark. You got to have uh, proper analysis to inform, uh, you know, what would be a meaningful incentive and also a minimal incentive. You don't want, you know, we don't want these to be bigger than they need to be. We want them to be just right. So uh, that requires analysis. That's one of the things we heard. Um, and that uh, analysis would um, be most competently done, I, I would think, by the planning department. And um, so the the, the other thing, though, is that it will require uh, ongoing discussion with uh, stakeholders. And so um, my thinking was that, a, a um, first of all, some analysis from the, from the planning department uh, on um, what would be appropriate in terms of, um, you know, achieving the goal that we're looking for, which is to alter behavior and get more fossil fuel free buildings. By district by district, you know, what would work in M zones and what would work in G zones. Um, that's number one. Number two, uh, a working group, which is kind of part of the existing infrastructure. And in fact, there is a dormant working group called the non public buildings working group from which Warrant Article 21 originated. And um, the proposal will be for that working group to, uh, you know, collaborate with the planning department on a timeline that would produce. Um, a product in time for uh, consideration for filing for the next town meeting. Okay, Mr. Kleckner, your thoughts? Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Chair. So um, I want to first say that I, I do not consider it unreasonable to uh, 
for the town to consider zoning incentives to provide uh, you know some promotion of fossil fuel free development um, I you know I think that's it's something that we've all thought was within you know the um, the ambit of issues I think even the uh, attorney general referenced it in her letter so um, you know I'm not opposed to that I, and and I think it's a reasonable approach I think um, the concern I have a little bit is the process and you know, quite honestly, uh, you know, it was a busy day for me today, and we really didn't have much chance to look at this. And, but initially, I have some concerns, and I'm going to express those. But overall, I want to be clear that I do not oppose uh, in any way the town from considering zoning incentives to try to influence um, climate behavior. And I also believe uh, town departments are uh, absolutely necessary to provide the kind of technical uh, analysis. Uh, that's not only the planning department, but I think the building department as well, who's very familiar with the, the way the zoning works. Um, but I have a few concerns. Um, and uh, one of those is that, um, you know, obviously I, I need a little bit more time and, um, you know, would love to have an opportunity to, to make some more specific uh, recommendations of the process. But my, my initial thoughts were, uh, number one, uh, that I would like to make sure that the working group represents the, um, you know, the community and whether that's an existing group or some new group the select board appoints. Uh, I think it's really important. And, and I, I understand where we were on Article 21 last year and how it evolved and, you know, became popular. And that very well may happen with zoning. But, you know, what I'm hearing is some very fundamental philosophical differences of opinion uh, from people who, you know, I, I respect and just like I respect the petitioners. I think that we have the beauty of this town. We have very smart people. Uh, but in this case, I'm hearing a lot of uh, differences of, of opinion and so in philosophy. And so I think it's important that any process that we engage in has to, uh, you know, consider all those, all those points of view. Um, but absolutely the planning and building department should be part of that. Um, the timing is a little concerning. Uh, I'm not one that says we don't have a sustainability administrator, so we can't go forward. You know, it is what it is. And, you know, maybe we can uh, fast track that a little bit. Um, you know, even if we started today, I'm, I'm guessing with notices, job notices and things, we probably couldn't have a, a sustainability administrator on for a couple months, but that still gives us some time. And if we could push out that January deadline a little bit, I think we'd have the ability to have some sustainability um, uh, uh, resources um, to, to bring to bear. So I would say the timing is a little bit of a concern for me. Uh, my understanding is the date to submit articles for the warrant for the spring is March, early March. So we know we don't have a lot of time, but there is a little bit of time there. And um, I also think that the um, proposal is very prescriptive. And uh, I'm a little concerned about it. Uh, you know, I, I, I will state one comment or one um, thing in the, in the report, which says, uh, it says the report shall propose incentives in each district, including um, bonuses for uh, um, land, uh, height, FAR, uh, parking, setback, so on. So that seems very prescriptive before we even have, uh, you know, done some analysis. So. Uh, for a lot of reasons, I wish we had a little bit more time to consider this proposal, but uh, fundamentally, I agree with it, and uh, I'm sure we could get it right. Yeah, well, I, okay. Any, any other comments? Not for me. Okay. Um, I would support the comments that Mel made. I think um, when it says shall, um, I think it's, it is a little bit prescriptive. What if... Uh, the planning department and the working group in the end say, you know, X is not the way to go, but Y is the way to go. Um, and so uh, I think you could change that word um, to something a little less uh, commanding, if you will. And uh, um, I also think that there should be some language, and I, I expressed this um, last time, that there should be some language, and I've developed a sentence, which I think we should add to the first, uh, the first sentence of the, um, uh, of the 
move uh, the motion, uh, which would be uh, the select board requests the planning department to identify and adopt policies, procedures, and guidelines that encourage developers to adopt the use of fossil fuel technology beginning now okay. so that we're not spending our time. I mean, we, we were, you know, we know that developers are doing this anyway, but if we can encourage them in any way to do it now, we should. Okay. And I think that uh, that's important. Okay, I, I don't want to um, be editing this resolution tonight, and I don't think that tonight's the appropriate time to either vote yay or nay. Um, I think we should put it on the agenda for next week. Uh, so we have a time to really think this through uh, and factor in the fact that, uh, you know, that uh, a sustainability administrator um, is really critical for the success of such a process. Um, you may not have it in time to, you know, uh, at, at the beginning of, of the process of setting, setting up a working group, uh, et cetera, but, uh, you know, we should think about how, um, you know, we, we, we do this in such a way that the a sustainability administrator could, could step in and really provide um, a boost to, uh, to, to the process. So I'm proposing, yes, uh, Mr. Fernandez, before I say what I was proposing. You, you sure? <laughs> yep, All positive. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll make my comments brief. Um, you know, generally supportive of this. I think that that bullet point that Mel points out um, and and maybe maybe shell is the wrong word, maybe, uh, but maybe propose is the wrong word and, and it's at least consider. I, I think that if, um, if, if this work was done and a report was created where we didn't at least consider bonuses and what that might look like. And if the planning department wants to say, well, here's what that might look like. We don't necessarily recommend this, but you know, I think we've got to see what the impact would be and that that's got to be part of this work. Um, so otherwise, I, I don't know. I think that's the linchpin to all of this is the question of whether what kind of incentives will we provide um, or are we willing right now to consider providing uh, and, and what impact might that have on zoning? That's the central question. So I think we've got to keep that in there in some way. And maybe it's not um, that they shall necessarily recommend and support these kinds of changes, but we at least need to see what the impacts might, would be. Right. Okay. So uh, I propose that we take this up at, at our Tuesday meeting um, and, and, you know, select board members you know, mull over this and uh, we come up with some, uh, something that addresses uh, concerns that the town administrator and, and others have in terms of this specific wording. Um, I, I would, like I said, um, you know, make sure that we uh, set up the working group uh, and other processes in such a way that uh, a sustainability administrator once on board can step in seamlessly. Um, and I assume that uh, I'd, I'd like to see if we can accelerate that process so that uh, we can you know, get someone on board quickly so that they're not too far behind uh, the work of a, a working group. Um, Mr. Kleckner. I, I wanted to comment on that, Bernard. Um, so, you know, we're, I think we're ready to advertise, not, maybe not right away, but we're, we're getting ready to advertise for this position. Um, the, imp, imp, uh, the impediment is a financial one as part of the budget. We uh, quite honestly um, uh, you know, use this as a budget saving technique to, to defer to some extent the, the implementation of this. So what I would suggest is we move expeditiously to recruit and, and uh, appoint a position. And then we're, when, when and if we're there uh, and it's prior to uh, January 1, uh, perhaps we seek some funding to to uh, expedite it. Um, so I think that's a commitment we'll make is to try to uh, identify a candidate for this job as soon as possible um, and, and see where we go. Okay. Uh, can I make a quick comment? Yes, please. I just wanted to say, um, you know, I support, I mean, I think it makes sense. I understand the desire to defer to next week and I, I appreciate that. I just wanted to say that, um, uh, sometimes uh, strong leadership is prescriptive, needs to be prescriptive. And, um, you know, while wording changes may be appropriate, 
I hope that um, I hope that you're able to support something next week that's still actually pretty, you know, maybe more inclusive of more, you know, specifying that more people will participate, things like that. But still, it may need to be prescriptive to get the job done to enable a high quality product at the next cycle, which is which is the goal. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I'll just um, jump in real quick. Uh, two things come to mind. I think, uh, well, actually three things. Uh, we absolutely need to backfill the sustainability administrator. Um, she shepherded so many things last year, and we're now realizing, you know, how much uh, we relied on that position now that it's vacant. Um, the other two things for me not so much that it's prescriptive. I, I think, uh, you know, you can kind of read into it what you want uh, and we can change some of the wording, uh, may, shall, um, what have you. But for me, it comes down to, I think the January deadline is too ambitious. Uh, the warrant closes for the spring uh, around the third or fifth of March. So that's probably a more realistic timeline. And then who comprises the working group, uh, I think is, is a central question to this. Uh, we get that right. And I think that we'll be able to have a very good result uh, because we'll have many eyes on this, asking those questions before it ever gets to the floor of town meeting. Okay. Uh, in terms of um, the sustainability administrator, uh, what I'd like to do is to have uh, a discussion uh, on the a report of the Collins Commission or the Collins Center um, by the select board uh, be before we jump off on that. Uh, not just to make sure that uh, select board members read that um, and, uh, you know, really digest it and, and um, understand, you know, the implications for that for the type of person that we hire. Um, you know, not everyone reads something just because it's in, the, in their email box, but if it's on the agenda, uh, I think people, you know, can be expected to really pay attention to it. Um, and maybe read it a second time um, in order to fully understand. So um, would, would anyone have a, an objection to having that, well, Next week probably is not a good time to do that. Um, no, I, let, let, let's just get on the agenda at some you know future meeting soon. Yeah, I, th I think what we would do uh, hopefully in September would be to uh, have an agenda item where we, uh, before we um, issue any formal uh, recruitment for the sustainability administrator, we look at the job description, the Collins Center report, and have a, a general discussion. I think that, that makes a lot of sense, Mr. Chair. Okay, good. Um, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, is that you, John? Yes. Okay. Uh, it, it, may I have a few words? Is that all right? Of course. Oh, great. No, I just didn't know whether you, you were. You're a junior select board member, but you you can speak just as much as anyone else. <laughs> I'm reminded of that junior status on a regular basis. Um, so I want to just say a few words in favor of <clears throat> excuse me in favor of where we are tonight where we are in this process. And I'll try to compress this as much as possible, um, but some quick history. Um, it was 2019 when um, Article 21 was adopted and that took a lot of discussion preceding the town meeting at which it was adopted. And the big leap that that uh, resulted in was by the end of the process, a, a concept that had seemed difficult to many people at the beginning was adopted almost unanimously by the end. And that was the concept that it was urgent to do something, <clears throat> excuse me, to, um, for the future, cut off uh, fossil fuel to constructions and to major renovations. And um, that, that won wide acceptance of the notion that buildings are a major part of the, the issue in terms of reaching climate change goals and that something could be done about it by virtue of <clears throat> an approach through the building code to rule out 
um, fossil fuel uh, infrastructure in the future, in, 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 all, in all construction going forward, or, or in as much of construction going forward as we could. So that was um, major leap number one, and it was accomplished a year ago. Um, and then we got the Attorney General's decision um, just a few months ago, which unfortunately you know, put us in the position of uh, not being able to go forward with that, um, but raised the possibility that the goal of Article 21 could be achieved through incentives. And so <clears throat> we began to sort of get our head around the idea of incentives. And that led to discussions of zoning incentives. So let's just quickly talk about zoning incentives. Um, they're not new. Um, we, we have uh, bonuses built into our current zoning that incentivize public benefits. So <clears throat> combine these two things, an acceptance that was almost universal at town meeting of the importance of doing something about fossil fuel uh, in buildings and the idea that we already have spent years studying and implementing public benefit incentives in our zoning, you've got two widely accepted uh, notions and now we're bringing them together. And then there's a third element to this. And that speaks to why three weeks ago, three members of this board, um, I shouldn't say three, uh, it may have been a unanimous board for all I know, um, felt it was important that the board be co-sponsors of a Warren article that would address fossil fuel uh, uh, limiting fossil fuels, uh, 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 incentivizing fossil fuel free buildings, excuse me, through zoning. Um, and uh, why, why would it be important for the select board to be on board with that? Um, because, because this is an existential problem. Most of the issues that the select board addresses on a regular basis, they're not issues of the future of the planet. Um, this is an issue of the future of the planet. Um, people are mystified if they see proposals brought to town meeting to address an issue of that magnitude that are coming not from the select board. Because the first question they ask is, if this is how to do it, why isn't the select board bringing this to town meeting? <clears throat> That's the leadership. And so I think we, we had to, as quickly as possible, take a look at this idea that was being formulated by the same people who formulated Article 21. And we had to get things in motion, get the attention of the public, get the attention of staff, get the attention of other boards and commissions within the town, and see if maybe we're ready. Maybe we are ready to take a, a zoning pu uh, public benefits incentive proposal to town meeting that would uh, incentivize fossil fuel free construction. A couple of weeks were spent on that and um, in the way that is, is you know, honorable and to be expected and is very useful, the, the, pe the people who had really important questions about this came forward and that's good, it's all good. And enough questions were raised that there was a change to, all right, let's not go forward to town meeting with this right now, but let's go forward with a working group that will address all of the questions being raised and then bring it to town meeting at a future date, hopefully sometime well, in time for the uh, annual town meeting in May of 2021. And so that's, that's what got us to where we are tonight. And um, I am in favor of taking another week, um, but I am also in favor of the select board staying in the, in the leadership with the partnership of Jesse and Lisa and, and the others who were responsible for formulating the proposal that is in front of us. Um, and in helping to address 
the, 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 the one impediment that always seems to get in the way of zoning changes. And that is that you'll have people say, this isn't going to accomplish what you think it will accomplish. That's, that's one aspect of it. And the, and the flip side is you'll have people say, this is going to have unintended consequences. So on the one hand, it's, it's not going to accomplish what you want to accomplish. Or on the other hand, it's going to have unintended consequences that we don't want. Those are all serious questions. And they've been brought forward by very serious and, and smart people, much smarter than I am. Um, they've also been addressed in, in return by other very smart people. I'm going to mention one of them right now, Steve Hyken, chair of our planning board, um, who make very reasonable cases point by point that for every instance of an unintended consequence, have you thought about this? For every instance of a provision that you say won't work, have you thought about this? That discussion is what I hope will happen in the task, in the, uh, excuse me, um, in, in the working group process going forward. And it will require the um, full-fledged support of staff uh, in town hall. So I hope in the next week, we figure out how that process can go forward, how it can be go forward under the right um, immediate leadership in terms of under, whom, uh, under whose authority is this task force launched, uh, this working group launched, excuse me again, um, who do they report to on a regular basis, and how do we make sure that the working group has the staff support that it needs to come to reasonable conclusions as to what to propose in 2021. And uh, Mel's views on this are extremely important. He's the one you know, running the show day to day. And he's the one who has the best sense of how to do the deliverables here. So I look forward to that, um, that input from Mel and I look forward to a vote a week from now. And I, I apologize for taking so much time but I felt it was necessary to kind of reestablish why we're here and to also reestablish it's good that we're here. This is, a, this is a positive step. We are way ahead of where we were three weeks ago in terms of getting a discussion going on this and getting some momentum behind it. So um, I'm happy that we're here. Okay, any further discussion? Anyone raising their hand? Steve, I can raise his hand. Steve, go ahead. Chairman, uh, if you don't mind, uh, since my name's been used, um, I, I take Not in vain. Or blame for uh, the zoning aspects of this. I wasn't part of the original group that put forward uh, Warren Article 21, and I joined the group when it became clear that an opportunity might exist within zoning. And within the short time we had, I think we did the best job we could of developing some strategies that we think have some opportunity to recognizing that the market is heading this way, but people's behavior does need to be changed of further pushing the needle towards more use of fossil fuel free building. Um, I think giving us some more time uh, and a chance for others to review it, there was some definitely some uh, useful feedback. I think the Warren article itself may not be as clear in its intent and language as what the explanation attempted to do, but I think we can still look at it further. And if we are going to spend the next few months in some form of committee or working group, I think we can look at other strategies. Uh, maybe the town, I heard the, the town administrator mention our financial difficulties, but maybe another strategy is to offer a tax abatement. That's, that's out of my level of experience, but others like Paul Saner and EDAP might be able to chime in on that if we get uh, a broad enough representation in the working group. I would love to see this move forward. I think the language of this uh, proposal that was asked of you to support this week could in fact be uh, modified a little bit. I thought rules mention of changing, not so much shall, but propose to consider in that one point, words like that, wordsmithing, I think can make this uh, work for everyone. And I would be happy to sort of take part in this effort going forward. Great, thank you. And working with the planning department as staff as well. 
Okay, so uh, any other uh, discussion, questions? Okay, um, how are we going to put together uh, a proposal for next meeting? Um, you know, I, I, Here, I, I, I'm prepared to make comments and, and, and basically suggest changes. Um, you know, I, I think we can work with the existing document and uh, and, and make changes. I, I propose some, but you know, I'm sure others are going to propose some. So I think that always the challenge is, is how do you do this in a productive way when there might be uh, multiple changes coming right. in at the same time? Uh, sometimes we can't avoid that. But I, I for one, intend to uh, develop some ideas and uh, proposals uh, to adapt the existing uh, proposal on the table. Yeah. Uh, we, okay. Yeah. I'd be happy to work with the uh, town administrator as a point of contact for the petitioners uh, throughout the next week on this, if helpful. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, I, have, you know, I've drafted an alternative uh, motion that basically incorporates, uh, you know, less prescriptive um, language. Um, I'll just send that to the town administrator. He can do with with it what he wants, <laughs> uh, so as not to create an open meeting law problem. Um, okay, so I, I guess that's the plan, uh, and that's the last item on our agenda. So, anything else that anyone wants to uh, raise? Thank nope. you so much for having this meeting, and thank you, Mr. Chair, for. Um, reminding us how important the sustainability uh, position is within the town. I just appreciate all of your attention to this uh, really important topic. And I'm, I'm very proud of Brookline and proud of the board at this moment. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate your time. Okay, great. Thanks. Bye. Meeting's over. See you tomorrow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're meeting tomorrow. Yes, Not sir. very far away. Maybe we should stick around. What do you think? I'm going to be around here. <laughs> I'll be around my house. Until then, yeah. bye.